So you don't have any way to transport a kayak, or maybe you don't have anywhere to store a kayak, and so you've decided that you need to get a portable kayak. The good news is that you've really narrowed down the options. The bad news is that there's still a ton of options. The first decision you need to make is do you get an inflatable kayak or do you get a folding kayak? What's the difference? Well, an inflatable kayak is very self-explanatory. It's a kayak that you inflate, that you, you blow it up with air and there you go. A folding kayak is a kayak that packs down very small and somehow folds into a full-size kayak without inflation. Now, there's a variety of ways that folding kayaks work. And today, we are testing the Track Kayak, the Track Kayak 2.0, which they believe is not only the ultimate portable kayak, but the ultimate touring kayak. Now, full disclosure here, I am not new to the Track Kayak. Yep, that's me and my buddy Brendan Mark pushing the Track Kayak to the limit about 15 years ago. They sent me one of the prototype kayaks to fully test. In their words, try to break this thing. Let's find its weak points. And so I have known and paddled the track kayak for many, many years. They've also sponsored an annual expedition that I've done for the past five years. Now, spoiler alert, I like this kayak, but it doesn't mean it's not without its flaws. And it certainly doesn't mean that I can't do an unbiased gear review of this kayak. It has strengths, it has weaknesses, it's not for everybody. The biggest question is, is it really the ultimate touring kayak? So let's get this kayak assembled and I'm gonna show you a little bit of how it's done because it's really a unique system unlike any other kayak I've seen. So the first step is to assemble the two frame sections, the bow and stern frame sections. Now the frame itself is made from an anodized aluminum aircraft grade aluminum, very strong and corrosion resistant. The ribs here are made from our composite or their carbon. So they're super lightweight. And that's really what they've tried to do is keep the light, the weight as low as possible. Now what I'm gonna do is put the two frames into the skin and we're gonna stretch them out. So now that we've got the bow frame in and the stern frame in, we're gonna use the three hydraulic jacks to push those frames to the ends of the kayak and that's gonna stretch the skin and make this thing rigid. Now all sea kayaks have something called bulkheads. And what bulkheads are is that they're walls in the kayak just in front of your feet and just behind your seat. And what that does is it separates the kayak into three separate compartments. So if you were ever to flip, swim, you're only going to swamp, flood the center compartment where you sit. The ends of the boat are going to hold air. And that's what keeps a boat from, well, makes it easy to get back in, easier to get back in and prevents the boat from sinking. Now, this boat doesn't have that luxury to have, of having bulkheads. And so it comes with two float bags. Now these float bags, one goes in the bow, one goes in the stern. The nice thing about these bags are they're also gear bags. So you can load this, they're dry bags. You load them up with overnight gear or just day tripping gear, whatever you need, and zip them up. And then you can blow them up and there you go dry bags and air bags at the same time. The final piece here is just get the seat and back band installed and then we're good to go. All right, good to go. So the Track 2.0 kayak has a retail price of 3,599 US dollars. It's 16 feet long, 22 and a half inches wide. It's 42 pounds. It has a capacity of 350 pounds and its primary use is touring. Now the skin of the track is a three ply expedition grade polyurethane material. And as I mentioned before, the frame is an anodized aircraft grade aluminum that's treated to withstand salt and corrosion. 
The boat has bungees on both the bow and stern decks. It has grab handles on either end, a perimeter line around the whole kayak, and it comes with a rolling travel bag along with a repair kit and the two airbags. It has a contoured seat and an adjustable back band, and it has thigh braces in two styles. You can get the standard style like this or a more aggressive style for more aggressive paddling. One of the most impressive features is the fact that it has a five year tip to tip warranty. I think pretty much everyone can agree that this is a really cool kayak. Going from a backpack to a 16 foot sea kayak is amazing. But is it the ultimate touring kayak? Well, for 3,500 bucks, it better be in that conversation. We're gonna take it on the water and I'm gonna show you what it can do. All right, I made a decision. This baby here is the Gear Lab Outdoors Calic Greenland paddle. Now I tested this paddle about a month ago. It's in the Dagger Stratus review video that we'll put a link in the description box down below to that one. But you know, I was surprised by how much time it took to get comfortable with this. And I don't feel like I got there yet. So I'm gonna test this paddle again today, give it a, a fair shake because man, it is a pretty paddle. All right. So the big question for me wasn't, is this a good kayak? Because I've been paddling a track kayak for off and on for 15 years. Yes, it's a good kayak. I wouldn't be paddling it if I didn't think it was a great kayak. So yes, it's a, it is a wonderful kayak. The question really is, is it the ultimate touring kayak? And is it worth the price tag, the $3,500 price tag? First of all, uh, $3,500 is a lot of money, but it's very comparable to a composite, a, a Kevlar sea kayak. And so how does this compare to a carbon Kevlar sea kayak? Well, performance wise. Does it paddle as well? Well, you know, it doesn't quite feel as smooth and slick through the water as a carbon boat, but it still performs very well. Like any portable kayak, you give up some performance for the portability. That's just a fact. That's always going to be the fact. Well, who knows? Maybe something will change down the road. But for now, that's the reality. And you, here, you give up a little bit of performance, but it still performs wonderfully. Stability. It doesn't matter what kind of kayak it is, really, whether it's carbon, whether it's a plastic kayak or this. A 22 and a half inch boat is a narrow boat. And so, no, it's not a super stable boat. It's got somewhat of a, you know, displacement hull, a roundish hull, even though there's hard chines on it. So, no, it's not a stable boat, but you give up stability for speed. That's a given when you hop in a sea kayak that's narrow like this. Stability is not a problem. It holds it on edge very nicely. It's got good secondary stability. I, you know, I was able to paddle very confidently around like that. So no, stability isn't a question. Let's talk comfort. How is the comfort in this thing? Well, you know, it's, that's probably one of the weaker areas for me. You know, being a soft shell, my feet are comfortable. Uh, you know, sea kayaks in general aren't, they're not rec kayaks. They don't have these nice big framed high back seats and uh, elevated uh, seats as well. You're right on the floor. You've got low back support. Uh, and you're packed in there nice and tight. Now, how does it compare to a comparable sea kayak? Well, I don't find it quite as comfortable as some kayaks, mostly because I'm on the bigger end, being six foot two, 195 pounds, in particular the six foot two part. Uh, I find the seat pan is just a little tight for my butt. If it was a little bit wider, uh, my weight would be distributed a bit more on my butt. A bit of it's on my hips right now. Um, and that's always been the case. And I've mentioned that to them, but you know, one size doesn't fit all with any seat. And so that's me in this boat. That's not necessarily gonna be 
every your, your experience in this boat. Otherwise, the thigh hooks are very comfortable in here. Uh, my knees, none of my legs are on. There's, hey, there's metal pieces here. There's aluminum in here. And those jacks, hydraulic jacks are in here, but I don't feel them at all. So uh, it's well designed that way. Well, sea kayaks typically don't have a lot of features. I mean, this one doesn't have hatches. Uh, like most sea kayaks do and doesn't have compartments bow and stern compartments for multi-day trips what you have instead is those dry bags that slide into here that you can fill with gear harder to get access to that gear you have to pull the whole dry bag out and uh, to access the gear so definitely not as convenient but again that's a cost of, of portability i mean you're not going to find a portable kayak that has hatches and has the same kind of access that a normal sea kayak has otherwise features this is where the track kayaks I haven't shown this yet but this is where the track kayaks truly excel this is what got me so excited about the track kayak when I first was uh, contacted by them and it's in here and that sounds bad <laughs> what it is is the hydraulic jack that is runs along this well you've got a hydraulic jack that runs along the keel the center line of the bottom of the kayak and then you have hydraulic jacks on the side of the kayak now if you crank one jack up more than the other then what it's going to do it's a long it's going to elongate one side of the kayak more than the other and what that's going to do is it's actually going to curve the kayak give it a banana shape now that's not usually a good thing, but this boat doesn't have a rudder or a skeg. It can't. And so what that actually lets you do is if you're on a long tour and you've got a steady wind coming in from one side, then you can actually curve your kayak a bit to deal with that wind rather than needing a rudder or a skeg. It's a way of countering that and that's really kind of cool but that's not what got me super excited about the boat what got me super excited about this boat is the hydraulic jack on the center uh, line of the kayak and the reason for that is this boat is 16 feet long and so when you crank that uh, that jack and push it that those two pieces of frame out what the boat's going to do is it's going to bend and you can actually control the amount of rocker from bow to stern in this kayak so you can drop it down very flat and that makes it great for touring for tracking for speed but then when you want to be maneuverable if you go into rock gardens you go into ocean surf you're doing some river uh, light river running then you can crank that hydraulic jack a bit and give this thing significantly more rocker and making make it way more maneuverable and it truly is a, a selling feature for me the idea that one kayak can do so many different types of paddling because you can control its maneuverability so all you do is crank up the jack like so and now you can see the ends of this kayak they're pretty high this boat is going to be much more maneuverable now I can just let out the, uh, or I can let the jack go a bit here. Boom. See how much that flattens out. Now this thing is a torpedo. It's going to be a tracking machine. I don't have to do one or the other. I can find any happy ground in between. And once you find this sweet spot for the type of paddling you're doing, you're done. You just set it up and go. That for me is a feature that is worth a lot that's what separates this kayak from every other kayak and why i've i've been a big track fan for uh well that's not the only reason but it's uh it's a key reason why i've been such a big track fan for so long last thing to talk about which is a big factor for any portable kayak inflatable or folding kayak is durability now i mentioned at the beginning that i've tested this thing in some pretty rough conditions everywhere from big surf in jamaica to running some significant white water but you don't need to take my word for it i'm going to show you what i'm talking about Here we go.
Well, rollability is good. I mean, it's a 22 and a half inch wide kayak. It's designed to be rollable. The only one thing to consider is the back is actually pretty high, so you can't swing yourself very easily up on the back deck. But that aside, high rollability. If you can't roll this kayak, it isn't the kayak, it's you. <sighs> well, that was fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what, even with the extra rocker in this thing, moving around a 16 foot kayak in whitewater, that's exhausting. We still have a question to answer. In fact, two questions to answer. Is this the ultimate touring kayak? And is it worth the 35 or $100 or so that it costs? And I think the answer to that question, really, it's the same question. Um, because the ultimate touring kayak in my mind, is absolutely worth $3,500. It might not be worth $3,500 to you to have the ultimate touring kayak, but for me, I love paddling, it is. Doesn't mean I can afford it, but it is worth it. So, is it the ultimate touring kayak? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. It depends who you are. It depends what you want out of a kayak. If you're somebody who wants a portable kayak, someone who wants not only be able to throw it in the back of your vehicle, but to fly with your kayak, not just any kayak, with a 16 foot high performance sea kayak. And not just a high performance sea kayak, a sea kayak that can adapt to different types of paddling environments because of the adjustable rocker. It can deal with ocean surf uh, and rough conditions, but it also can tour very effectively so i mean that is you know for a lot of people that is not available in any other kayak and so absolutely this is the ultimate touring kayak for people where those factors are are difference makers if they're not then you're paying a premium for those factors do you not need adjustable rocker are you never going to be going into rougher conditions well maybe it doesn't matter to you maybe you're fine transporting a kayak, um, you have a vehicle with roof racks. So it really depends on you, but I do not think that they have um, led anyone astray when they say that this thing is the ultimate touring kayak, because uh, it is for a lot of people, and it is, in my mind, worth the money, even though it's a lot of money for a kayak. As for the Greenland paddle, well, you're gonna to have to wait for another video to hear my second review of that one. I'm gonna test that one some more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. <sighs> Stay tuned. We got lots more videos coming your way. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Of course, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And let me know what you guys wanna see more of on this channel, because I'm game. We'll see you again soon.